So, I guess it's Saturday night, I've had probably a little too much to drink, and I figured I would talk about RSS feeds. Uh, this is sort of a follow-up to my intro on feeds, um, which I will leave a link to below um, in both written and video form. I also figure I'll probably talk in the future about two more things, specifically how to create one yourself, and also why they might be worth considering. Anyway, I will leave the text form of those videos in the description below right now, because they're already completed, and I will leave the video version down below once I actually finish those. Anyway, regardless, this video is about how to get RSS feeds for various services. Some natively support it and require no effort whatsoever. Some require us to jump through a few hoops to get it all set up. But in the end, hopefully you should be able to subscribe to just about anything on any platform through RSS feeds without needing to create an account or anything like that. As a rule, I would like to avoid listing out any method that would require you to register an account or use an account in order to get or generate any RSS feeds. Anyway, let's get started. So first, with YouTube, uh, the simplest way is just to show the page of source. Usually on Windows or Linux, or probably Mac as well, you just right click and click show source. And then from here, you can just search for the letters XML. The last time XML appears, it should be a link. You can copy that link and paste it into your RSS reader and get a feed for any, any YouTube channel or playlist. Additionally, um, apps like Newpipe or browser extensions will also give you the RSS link without any sort of uh, inspecting the page source. And additionally, you can get a RSS link from an NVIDIA instance, which is just a third-party YouTube front-end that is supposed to be um, privacy-focused and uh, blocking ads, as well as from openrss.org. For Odyssey, PeerTube, or 3speak.tv, there is a subscribe via RSS icon right within any channel page, so you can do that without any sort of extra effort. Through Rumble, apparently you have to pay for them to give you an RSS link, However, you can get one for free without registration through openrss.org. And I wasn't able to get any information on services like DTube or Dailymotion, so as far as I'm aware, there is no way to get an RSS feed, at least without registration, which I will get to in a little bit. Beyond video platforms, which I just mentioned, there's obviously blogs and news sites and other text-based content. There's a lot of different platforms, so I figured I would list off as many as I can, at least at least as many as I thought of while writing this down. Though luckily there's not a lot of complication to getting an RSS feed for this sort of stuff. And written content, unlike you know video platforms, they're usually more likely to push you to RSS, and less likely to try and keep you locked into their platform through a first party app or something like that. Anyway, uh, for WordPress. Uh, most will have an RSS link somewhere on their homepage, but if they don't, you can go to the main site and type slash RSS, and you can also do this for various tags and authors, you just add slash RSS to the end of the URL. For a uh, blogspot slash blogger RSS feed, you can get that by going to the main site and then typing slash feed slash posts slash default question mark alt equal RSS. I will have all of these things on screen if, if you're listening to this in video form so that you can actually type it out. Otherwise, again, I will have a text form linked below where you can just copy paste and all that sort of stuff. Similarly, for uh, Medium, you can just go to the author's page and type slash feed to get a feed URL. Um, now for Hive.blog, while Hive doesn't natively support RSS, using HiveRSS.com, you can create a feed for any user. Just, you know, HiveRSS.com slash at username slash feed. Though um, HiveRSS actually does have a lot more in-depth options. So I highly recommend you just go to HiveRSS.com and look at all the ways you can get feeds if you're interested in getting a HiveRSS feed. Similarly, with Tumblr, uh, you just type slash RSS on any blog or user and you can get a RSS feed for that specific URL. Now, this is a little bit more generic. Uh, but as far as new sites go, most new sites have RSS support, um, but it obviously varies from site to site. Uh, my recommendation would first be look over the main page for RSS, probably somewhere at the bottom of the screen. If you don't see any RSS link at the bottom of the screen, try and find some sort of sitemap and read through that. A lot of times, if they don't have it on the main screen, if you scroll through the sitemap um, and they have RSS, it'll probably be there. If that fails, go to your favorite search engine and search site colon and then the URL for the main page of the site base RSS 
and if you get no results, then just try searching out the name of the new site and RSS. So, you know, say New York Times space RSS. Um, and if you still can't find anything there, you might be out of luck, at least in terms of finding a link that you could use without registration. Again, I'll get into that in just a little bit. Anyway, uh, for ground news specifically, instead of relying on their app or their website, you can go to openrss.org again. For Substacks, you can get an RSS feed. It's hit. All you need to do is go to the author's page and type slash feed. So, you know, author.substack.com slash feed. Um, and last, um, in terms of written content, I was able to find um, Steam RSS for Steam. However, it looks like the site is no longer up and the domain may have changed. So, unfortunately, as, I'm, as far as I'm aware of, it's not possible to get a, an RSS feed for Steam it unless you're going to use one of the services that you register and generate your own feed. So next I figured I would talk quickly about audio. Um, in this case, uh, the audio section is much shorter. Um, this is mostly just going to be podcasts with at least one minor exception being SoundCloud. Um, SoundCloud, at least from what I could find, um, it appears the, the creator has the option to enable RSS. And in that case, the RSS feed that listeners can subscribe to covers both podcasts and music and stuff like that but it's an option that the creators specifically have to turn on, so it's probably not an option for everyone. And uh, similarly, um, it appears that iTunes will allow you to get an RSS feed for podcasts, but you have to be signed in on the desktop version, already be subscribed to the podcast, and then you can get the RSS feed, so it's pretty limited there. And of course, Spotify has no support whatsoever. Um, beyond that, however, uh, most self-published podcasts will have some sort of an RSS feed, if for nothing else, to integrate with podcast apps and stuff like that. But generally speaking, if you go to their socials or the main website, you can probably find an RSS feed. But obviously it varies from uh, publisher to publisher. Finally, I figured I would touch quickly on social media. This is also a bit short of a section, uh, just because, you know, most things, you know, Snapchat, Facebook, etc., aren't really the kind of thing that you would create an RSS feed for since they're most limited to friends or family or the specific permissions on who can see stuff and who can't. But in this case, uh, the only types of social media that you would that you would generally be getting an RSS feed for is stuff that's 100% public, you know, Twitter or Reddit or something like that. Anyway, as far as Twitter goes, OpenRSS will create an RSS feed for a Twitter account that you can add to a feed reader. Additionally, um, Knitter instances which, just like NVIDIA's, is a privacy slash ad-free third-party front-end, will also allow you to get an RSS feed for the tweets of a user. As for Reddit goes, uh, you can just add slash dot XML to just about any Reddit URL, and this works for, you know, for example, um, subreddits, which can be sorted by trending slash news slash hot, user profiles, and even comments on specific posts. In each of those scenarios, you would just go to the page you want to subscribe to, and then add slash dot XML to the end of the URL. Similarly, uh, for Mastodon, um, similar to Reddit, uh, you would just go to the profile of the feed you want to subscribe to and add dot RSS. Unlike all the other um, ones I've mentioned so far, there's no slash, it's just period RSS to the end of the URL. Unfortunately, not all ActivityPub compatible social media platforms allow you to create an RSS, um, such as Plamore, Though some platforms like, for example, Friendica or I believe Hubzilla as well, have a subscribe to RSS button, so it obviously varies from place to place. Though Mastodon is probably the most popular, and this is how you do it specifically on Mastodon. Finally, uh, for Instagram, uh, while searching out how to get a feed for Instagram, I found rssbox.herokuab.com. However, unfortunately, as of writing it, it was scheduled to shut down in about 30 days, so that is probably right about now. However, literally like a day ago, um, just kind of randomly, I found, I believe the URL was trom.rf. I'm not 100% sure on that. I will have that on screen if you're listening to the other version of this. They also have what appears to be an RSS box hosting. So you can get an Instagram feed as well as feeds for a whole bunch of different things. Again, that will be on screen. And finally, if all else fails, if you've gone through my list here, uh, if you, you know, searched on your favorite search engine for ways to get an RSS feed, and no matter what, you can't seem to find a way to get a feed for a particular site or service, you have another option here. First, there's the, you know, freemium or paid RSS feed creator sites like Feed43, RSS.app, 
Zapier and FetchRSS. All these services require an account, so that cuts down on the privacy aspect of using feeds, and they also require a payment for some or all of the features provided by the service. However, if you're desperate, you can always give them a try. They will allow you to create a feed from a website that generally doesn't support it. And beyond that, uh, services like Feedly might allow you to subscribe to things that would otherwise not include feeds. Obviously, uh, you'd be trading off your privacy for easy subscriptions and cross-device sync. Similarly, some self-hosted options like RSS Box can obviously generate feeds while allowing you to control your own data, but you have to self-host it, so you've got to have a home server or a VPS subscription. Anyway, I guess that's about everything. If you are watching this on YouTube or DayTube or something like that, or reading on Hive, then there's a chance this might come out of date, though I will try and keep the version of my website up to date. If you want to access that, I will leave a link on screen in the description just in case you're reading or watching this way after it was posted and things become out of date. Regardless, um, if you have any better ways of getting feeds, or if this guide is out of date and not working, uh, feel free to send me a message or leave a comment below, that way I can keep things up to date. Anyway, uh, regardless, I hope this was useful.